Hey there guys, Octavian here. Nice to be back. I always look forward to this every day getting to cast another game for you all. And we do indeed have another game for me to shout cast over for you. This one was sent in to me by Lee Sin. Gonna be on the purple team there. You can see him on the screen right now. His name is Treason. That's a that's a pretty good name. I like that one. I like the simple one word names that they're not even really names, really. I mean, treason's just a word. It's a thing. It's not really a, a name, but they always they roll off the tongue so nicely. A lot of Chinese players are really good at making those, like, as we can see at Worlds with uh, people like Uzi and... Actually, I think Deft is Korean, but his name is great, too. So, lots of good names out there, but I'm getting a little bit off topic here. We have Purple Team looking to maybe be going for an invade. They've dropped a ward out. They didn't see anybody with it. Riven has no idea this is happening, and this might be bad for her. They're going to round the corner. They're in the bush. She has not seen them. Oh, they, she certainly sees them now. Stunned up by the Pantheon, trying to get away with Broken Wings. The Q lands from Lee Sin, though he goes right back in, and first blood to Aurelia. Not even a summoner burned. Minions have spawned. That is an early first blood. Successful invade, I would certainly say, from Purple Team. Though, Blue Team seems to be counter-invading over at their red buff. Let's uh, see what Purple... Or their blue buff, rather. Got my colors swapped there. But uh, let's see what Purple Team does in response here. They don't have a ward back there, so they don't know. Panther going to walk past Azir, and Azir auto-attacks him. Azir gives the game up. The jig is up, folks. Get out of there, Blue Team. Get out of there. No. Karthus, don't do it. He's starting up the blue buff, but there's Pantheon here, along with Aurelia. It's a 2v2 showdown. Karthus flashing away. Flash after heal. Ignite! So many summoners going down. Ignite is burning on the Karthus. Is he going to fall? He doesn't fall off to the side, and here's Azir for the backup, along with Misfortune. Pantheon has one auto attack left of health, but Misfortune has lost her path of passive. Aurelia, the lifesaver. Nobody goes down. Really. Really. No one went down there. Well, <laughs> we're back up at top lane. Where we see the Rengar and the Riven dueling it out. We've got an alliterative lane matchup here. Rengar versus Riven. Riven going in with the broken wings. We've got a ton of action already in this game. If this is any sign of what the rest of the game is going to be like, I like it a lot. Lee Sin has invaded onto the blue buff here for Karthus. And Karthus is heading over to that very same blue buff. Hopefully LeBlanc will be back with us soon. He's stolen it away. That's going to hurt for Karthus. Karthus, jungle, by the way. We've got some strange picks in this game coming out here. We've got the Pantheon support with the Relic Shield. Riven going in up on top. Lane lands the knockup. Rengar turns around. He has five stacks Ferocity, though, but he doesn't get the Ferocity queue off. He only gets the normal one, then actually turns and walks away, sort of stuttering the animation a little bit. It was a little bit indecisive there, and it seems to have uh, bit him in his tail, so... But we also, not only do we have the Karthus jungle, which is a bit of an odd pickup, but albeit not not so terribly unheard of. We have the Azir support and the Pantheon Aurelia bot lane. This game promises to be interesting. Ooh, and interesting already. Riven getting the kill in top lane. Ignite going to do her dirty work for her as she manages to dash away with that shield dash now. Pantheon a little bit low under the tower, but thankfully Azir cannot dive in because here comes Lee Sin. He has double buffs. He's lands the slow into misfortune. Her passive is not going to be helping her here. Treason getting the kill back. The ignite is dropped by the Azir. He flashes forward. He really wants this kill. The soldier lands an auto, but he has safeguard to keep himself alive. And the Pantheon Aurelia lane coming out ahead. 3-1 to Purple Team here already at 4 minutes into the game. We have had a kill a minute, ladies and gentlemen, and let's see if we can keep up that rate. Caitlyn going to be pushing up the mid lane here. It's a middle lane Caitlyn, too. I, did, there's so, I haven't mentioned everything because there's so many strange things to mention. Ooh, LeBlanc going in. The, ch the chain does not quite proc. Caitlyn did manage to net away just before it did, and Karthus is still level 1. Ooh. That is painful for Karthus. His early clear is where he's lacking. So being that far behind in the jungle as we see LeBlanc going in, doesn't have enough mana to keep this up though. But his early clear, Karthus in the jungle, is where he's lacking the most. Karthus late game is strong, like no matter what, so it's really, really bad for him that he's gotten this invaded by the Lee Sin early, and that's just a terrible matchup for Karthus Jungle in the first place. It's Riven and Rengar going it out. He gets five stacks, lands the Ferocity Q this time, forced to flash away, though. Actually, I don't even know if he was really forced there. Kind of a little bit of a panic flash. Riven didn't have any of her cooldowns up for a little bit longer. Now she's hearing cooldowns are back up, though. Third proc of Broken Wings, the stun, and an auto attack flashes away from Tower, but there's Lee Sin. Treason finished that off. Well done by him. Now down in bot lane, we have 
I can't even really talk about these matchups because they're all so outlandish. Like, top lane is the only semi-reasonable matchup in this game. So I may as well talk about that one since I do have a little bit of experience in the Rengar vs. Riven matchup, and as we've seen so far, it is very snowbally. And honestly, I'm surprised. Oop, going with stun here. The slow lands onto both the Pantheon and the Aurelia, though. Very good kiting by Misfortune. Pantheon's going down very quickly. Azir took him down to about half his health by this Aurelia. He dashes in for the knockup onto Aurelia. Slows her up as well. And Misfortune swap targets here. So much of your time was wasted there trying to get more damage onto the Pantheon, but you could have just turned onto the Aurelia and maybe burned her down. Maybe a bit of a miscommunication there between the Azir and the Misfortune. It is a little bit of a strange bot lane, both that they are and that they're facing, so maybe they just didn't really know exactly how to play it, and honestly, I can't blame them as you're going in. Doesn't have the knockup, though. And he's kind of out of mana at this point, which is not a good place for him to be in. Though, albeit, the um, Pantheon and the Aurelia are also both fairly low themselves on health, if not mana. And Honestly, if you were going to run two melee bruisers in the bottom lane up against a standard AD carry support combo, though I guess Azir isn't really standard, but at least a ranged AD carry support combo, Pantheon Aurelia isn't actually your worst choice for that. They both got decent stuns. Aurelia is certainly going to be lower on health than the enemy with the uh, huge range advantage that they have, so her stun's basically guaranteed to pry proc rather off of that Equilibrium Strike. Oop, stun from the Pantheon going in. Aurelia gonna land the Equilibrium Strike for the slow. Trying to do as much damage as she can. The Ignite is dropped. Pantheon with the Spear finishes off the kill. Meanwhile, up in top lane, we have Riven pulling off the 2v1, gets a kill back! And we swap away as the Misfortune is still in trouble here too. The stun lands onto her from the Aegis of Zeonia. And the kill. Oh, Lee Sin! Lee Sin, you can do it! Treason is on a killing spree. We are seeing flashes of action up in top lane. We keep swapping back to bottom, but we go back just for the best bits. Oh, LeBlanc flashing in distortion as well, but the chain is sent backwards. Bit of a misclick there as Karthus trying to get something back. Oh, he's level 3 though, and the burst from this level 6 Lee Sin is just way too much for him to handle. But half of his health just disappeared. It was just gone in a moment. That's the sort of advantage that you can expect to see come out of a 4-0 Lee Sin at 7 minutes into the game, especially against a Karthus jungle. That is pretty much the most painful situation this Karthus could be in, and I know Karthus loves his pain and his death, but maybe he should ease up on it a little bit for the sake of his team. LeBlanc doing a decent job farming under the tower there. We haven't really talked about the middle lane matchup too much. I said she was doing a decent job farming into the tower, and in that specific instance it was true, but it doesn't seem like she's been doing a decent job overall. Caitlyn has quite a large CS advantage already, as Karthus... LeBlanc is not getting that blue buff. Karthus is level 4, he is Karthus jungle. I don't, I don't know if LeBlanc is ever going to see the light of a blue buff circling around her feet. Azir getting stunned up. Turning around, doing some good damage. Meanwhile, in middle lane, LeBlanc doesn't quite manage the damage! And Misfortune is caught out. She is stunned up. She's flashing away. And we have action everywhere. As usual, Lee Sin going in. Riven manages to hop over the wall, but so can Lee Sin. He ward hops to chase after her. He has the red buff. If he can just land one, auto lands the Q. Gonna go in with that to auto her up as well. Slow her up. And now down in bottom lane, we have so much stuff happening. I'm sorry if I'm talking too quickly to follow, but I have way too much action to talk about. Treason is unstoppable. Only one kill, really. Really, I feel a little bit cheated, honestly. I feel a little bit cheated. There was so much stuff happening everywhere and we only get one kill out of that? I am disappointed in you. I'm not sure who I'm talking to. I mean, it was both teams trying to make things happen all over the map, so I don't, I'm not sure exactly who I'm disappointed in, but that simply makes my disappointment all the stronger. As Aurelia and Pantheon are going to be pushing in onto the tower down here. Something interesting, um, Pantheon seems to be going with a fairly support-centric build. So we do have a support, and I suppose, AD carry bot lane for purple team here, with Aurelia just being not a marksman, um, as Riot does like to make that differential there, but is at least an AD carry. Looks to be building a Trinity Force, so there's certainly AD and carrying potential there. 
And um, Pantheon is gone with a Relic Shield, and he's got that Kindle Gem looking to build it up into the full face of the mountain, I'm supposing. So he's not going to actually do much damage, as we just saw from that Spear Toss there, but he can spam him out fairly effectively, so long as he manages his mana correctly, and he's going to be fairly tanky as well. And if he builds a Sight Stone, he'll have that going for him, so... Sight Stone is a good item. Build it. It's, it's very good to build, kids. My, I'm not very good at PSAs. That's that's not what I do. Anyways, um, also, something odd about the bottom lane is if we didn't have enough odd things. Aurelia and Pantheon seem to be able to push up under the tower. LeBlanc trying to go in again. And despite the fact that she has a CS deficit in the middle lane, LeBlanc has been so aggressive this game. My lord. I, I think I've said LeBlanc goes in again at least four times. As now Pantheon is going in again. The Q landed on to... To Caitlyn, but it doesn't even get followed up on by Lee Sin. Aurelia has so much damage. She's on a rampage. And Rengar, there's a ribbon in the bush. She comes dashing out. She comes slashing out. She has her ulti and wind slash. Gonna be bringing down Mr. Quisitor on that Rengar. Hilds over Peacemaker. Pop in the LeBlanc passive, but she doesn't care. She wants to go aggressive, but really can't. Stormguard has the ulti. Caitlyn ult does damage. Turning around, taking down Little Blog, as now Treason is being chased out by the Karthus and the Azir in the jungle. They both flash forward, the Ignite is dropped, the Karthus ult is running! He turns around, but he has no way of stopping this. He can only watch as his death comes down to him from above. Karthus pulling himself back into this game a little bit with that shutdown gold. And uh, he's finally hit level 6, as we saw evidenced in that duel there. And uh, Caitlyn going to be picking up the second turret of the game for Purple Team. Meanwhile, Riven is working on the first for her team in top lane, but a teleport from the Aurelia going to be stopping her out. She blade surges to a minion, but doesn't want to follow it up with another blade surge onto the Riven, or perhaps just wasn't in range. But either way, the Aurelia going to be able to clear out the minion wave there, as the Riven is going to be able to simply back in the bush. And you know, this makes a lot more sense. Aurelia being in top lane, it, it makes a lot more sense to me. I'm still a little bit thrown off by this game as it's, as a whole, but I suppose in the late game they'll still have a marksman since they have the Caitlyn middle lane, and um, they did a decent job down in bottom lane. They, they didn't really shut down the misfortune, but they certainly did a decent job. And here is LeBlanc, maybe disconnected. She did have some issues earlier, but we'll get back to that in a second. As we see Riven going in onto the Aurelia, who was slowed up by the. Wall from the Karthus, but it's hard to see seeing Aurelia, as Riven is rapidly finding out here, going in for the duel. She avoids the wall, avoid doesn't go down until another auto attack. So it does go down, my point is entirely made moot, and here is Lee Sin kicking the Karthus back into the era. <laughs> well done, Lee Sin. Uh, it's always nice to see somebody use the secondary effect of Dragon's Rage. Which, for those of you who don't know, if you uh, use Dragon's Rage on an enemy and then that enemy hits another enemy before the knockback is completed. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. We have an engage here from the Pantheon under the tower. Ace and the whole finishing off Misfortune. Stormguard is on a killing spree. But yeah, if you uh, manage to kick somebody back into another one of their teammates with Dragon's Rage, that person that you kicked becomes a sort of projectile and uh, damages the person that you hit, as Karthus found out. Much to his dismay when he was used as a sort of wrecking ball, killing his friendly Riven, and Mirror Step is on a killing spree of his own. Support Pantheon really starting to work out for him. Blue buff again stolen away that. One blue buff so far has gone over to blue team this whole game, though to be fair I believe only three have spawned so far, so one out of three though, that's not a very great score. And Lee Sin's waiting for a gank. Certainly got plenty of ward coverage. <laughs> we're just sitting in the lane there. Oh, LeBlanc. Fairly sure she's having some internet issues, or maybe she's purposefully doing this. Hopefully not. Meanwhile, up in top lane, though, the Riven is getting dove, and the Riven is going down. Rengar taking down the LeBlanc, though, really, that's not much more than a minion kill at this point. As the turret summoned by Azir here is going to help him clear out this minion wave. And we don't get to see too much Azir play, so... It is nice to see it now and then, and look at that pretty art, pretty graphics, as you uh, can see from the turret being risen from dust to fight once more for the deserts of Sharima. I can't do it, Azir's voice yet. I don't even know what Azir's voice sounds like off the top of my head. I don't know why I attempted to do one, but 
It was a fairly emperor sounding voice, at least. But there wasn't very much bird in it. I didn't really go caca at any point. God, even the support pantheon is doing damage to the Karthus jungle. I did not think I'd ever say that. I, I honestly didn't think I would ever say that sentence. But this support pantheon is doing a really good job of harassing down the enemy team's jungle Karthus. You know, with his double buffs. Why is this game happening? Why does this exist? <sighs> Anyways, Riven and Karthus seem to have formed a dynamic duo up in the top lane, but their dynamic duo miss might just be interrupted here. Treason coming in. He lands the Q, he follows it up, he gets the slow with the Tempest Cripple, and Aurelia gonna finish off the kill. A magical blade flying from her face to bring down the Riven. Gets the double kill with the Blade Surge, flies out to a minion, away from the tower. And, Inquisitor, you're a little bit late to the party. Frank, Mr. Inquisitor, you're just, just a little late to the party. Everybody, everybody's dead, but I mean, you can show up if you want. There is a turret to take. You can do that, or you can just go to the white and bring that down. Five members of Purple Team actually up in the top lane there. Really focusing in on to this turret here. Oh, no, not five. Lee Sin was back at base. Four members still, though. That's quite, quite a good number of members here. That turret's certainly going to be falling. As we see Rengar heading on back to base, the rest of his team... Pushing out to bring that turret down as swiftly as they can. Blue team is really in a pit here. This is not very good. Mirror step going forward. He lands the stun. He leaps onto the Karthus with his shield first. As the turret falls once again. 6-0 turret lead for purple team. Somehow managing to make their unorthodox strategies work off. And the 4-inch jump from Pantheon. <laughs> <sighs> Misfortune getting left upon by the Rengar. And another leap from the Lee Sin. Somebody leaps another leap out of the bush. Misfortune going down. Mr. Quisitor picking up that kill. Well done by him. 22 to 6 in terms of kills. 6 to 0 in terms of towers. This game is Purple Team's game to lose here. Mr. Treason trying to find another kill for himself. Flashes forward. Doesn't quite land the kick, though, before he gets done. Lands the Q. Goes in with the resonating strike. Aurelia trying to chase after. Aurelia succeeding in chasing after. Killing spree for Aurelia. Machutska picking up that kill. And I really don't think that Killer Wolf can finish off the Lee Sin here. Yeah, he just safeguards over the wall. But Machutska might be a little bit caught out. Goes in with the blade surge, trying to sustain up, but shut down from the misfortune. As now his ear is going to fall as well. Treason is on a rampage again. Lee Sin doing a lot of work in this game. 9 and 1. Goes in with the follow up on the resonating strike. Nearly going down. Does go down. Double up. Going to follow him and bring him down. As now Card Salty is coming across. But Ace in the hole going to finish off the misfortune for a rampage. Meanwhile, Riven is going down to the huge amounts of damage this Caitlyn is suddenly putting out. Double kill for her. And uh, she'll just go and net over the wall to get out of that enemy base. Quickly as she likes. Oof. This game. This game is painful for blue team here. And I'm really not sure what way they can get back in this game. It seems like LeBlanc is still having some sort of issue connecting. Or alternatively may have left. Hopefully not. I like to think that these games don't have people that simply rage quit, but it is League of Legends, and it is very often League of Legends solo queue. And that's a fact of life. You get people who are not very patient and play the game solely to win and never to simply enjoy it even while losing, so we'll often simply quit a game if they feel like it's not going in their favor immediately. Don't want to Pull it out to the late game, see what they can accomplish. Nice cute. Lands from Lee Sin, going to be following it up. But he doesn't have anything else to go with, and he takes a bunch of harass back for his efforts. Not really worth it, Treason, but Purple Team's kind of far ahead at this point. They can really afford to throw a few advantages away and still have plenty more to work with. Q lands onto Riven. Follows it up again, dashes to award. Just trying to be flashy right now, but he doesn't have safeguard to escape, and Riven flashes for it. She lands the knockup, and then the stun but goes down to the ace in the hole, plus the burst damage from Aurelia. And the stun from Panthea. Credit where credit is due, so Lisa manages to escape. As Karthus has shown up, doesn't really have anyone to get into this fight, though, and bullet time forced out just to clear the minion wave. That's not good. There's a lot of things that are not good here for blue team. 
I could basically point to pretty much any play in this game and say that's not good for blue team. Because nearly all of them have been not good for blue team. It's been a fairly dominating performance so far. Pushing up the mid lane. Stormguard taking out those minions as quick as he likes. And we're onto the inhibitor towers here already at just past 20 minutes into the game. And I had a question about the Azir and Pantheon interaction there, whether Azir's soldiers would get blocked by Pantheon's passive, and they do not. Today, I and you both learned that something. Azir's soldiers, while they do auto-attack for him, do not, for the purposes of Pantheon's passive, count as being an auto-attack, at least not one that's blockable. Probably for Fiora's repost as well, but... There is no French swordswoman in this game, so I have no way of telling you that with 100% certainty. Q lands from trees, and he goes in. He's following it up. He wants to get the kick back onto the Karthus, and he does get the kick back onto the Karthus. The ace in the hole comes out, doesn't quite do enough damage. Thankfully, Karthus has managed to develop a little bit of tankiness at this point. Now, meanwhile, Treason getting ulted, but Karthus does nothing, and Pantheon's ulting it! <laughs> Squashed by the man drop. What a way to go. Middle inhibitor turret now going to be falling. Mirror step finishing that one off. Getting the kill credit for the turrets. That's what really matters. Doesn't matter if you're a support pantheon and you don't get all the kills yourself. So long as you get the kill credit on the turret and... Oh, Azir friend, you chased much too far. Perhaps pantheon did too. He did indeed. He's opted for a little bit of damage after finishing off that relic shield. So he's going to get shut down. And meanwhile, Joshua Gress is pushing down bottom lane. He gets a turret back for blue team. And while that's certainly not by itself going to bring them back into this game here, it does give them something. It give more than the gold, more than that small chunk of change that they're going to be gaining from bringing down an outer turret in the bottom lane. It gives them a sense that they can accomplish things. That is not a complete shutout, but Josser Regress has perhaps pushed a little bit too far. Pushed too greedily and pushed too deep. And uh, they're just going to leave him to die. Oh, the shield not quite enough. Treason has slain Joshua Gress. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds like some sort of thing you'd find in, I don't know, some old colonial story. I don't know where I was going with that. Mr. Quisitor going to be dropping as Ace in the Hole is being dropped on to Karthus. And that's actually a one-for-one -one trade for Blue Team up in the top lane, which is a lot better than some of the trades they've been getting of late. Killer Wolf, don't do this. Don't you? Thank you. He's going back to base. Yeah, he could not take that. And Miss Fortune probably cannot take this lease in either, but at least she has her turret to defend behind him. Killer Wolf, why didn't you finish basing? He's just here for the minion wave. Stormguard flashes forward. Pilt over Peacemaker alone is enough to give Stormguard the kill. He's legendary. And now Treason is in 1v1 with the Miss Fortune, but he's going down fast. He doesn't quite fall, though, but maybe to discard this ult. He has the Relic Shield from Pantheon, saving his life. Well timed. Now Karthus is in trouble. Aurelia is here, stunned. Lands from Equilibrium Strike, and she's doing so much damage. Blade Surge just after he tries to get away to make sure she can gap close, and the Equilibrium Strike finishes him off just before he gets onto Fountain. That's depressing. That is the worst time to die, just before you're about to step, or I suppose float, onto your safety fountain. You go down. Zier manages to escape the clutches of the Aurelia, but I don't think the Nexus will be quite so lucky. Both Nexus turrets have fallen. Nexus is currently under fire, and they're toying around a little bit. But I don't think even a few missteps here are going to save Blue Team for this game. Joshua Gress trying to make something happen down in the bottom lane. I mean, his Nexus is falling, but he's still fighting on! Mr. Quisitor, though, has brought his fight to an end. He fought the good fight, but he could not fight it quite long enough. Ooh, <laughs> the turret comes back to life. Azir doing some work here. And they actually managed to hold off for a little bit longer, perhaps because of the distraction provided by the Riven in the bottom lane, perhaps because of Azir's turret. There's a lot of factors, but they managed to not lose the game which is one of the prerequisites for winning the game, so at least it's a good step in the correct direction. You have to first not lose before you do indeed win. So we see the red buff being stolen away by Markuchka here on the Aurelia. That is a fun name to say. Going back to the original 
theme of this episode. The first thing I mentioned with uh, Treason's name, Merkuchka, is also such a nice name. I have no idea what it means or if it even means anything, but... Oh, uh, the one who won between Pantheon and Karthus, and we know the direction that is going at this point. Karthus does at least manage to escape. And game announcement on turret die, blue turret, does occur. <laughs> oh, bugs. Rengar in a 1v1 with the ribbon and actually losing it out. She flashes forward to the stun. The AoE stun doesn't care about invisibility. She gets the kill. Josh Regress, not giving up. Doing his best. Kind of cut out here, though. Merch Kuchka and Treason, the two best names currently on the Rift, are chasing after Josh Regress. Doesn't land the Q, though, after safeguarding forward. Can he leap over the turret? He does, or the wall, rather. He does manage to get across the teleport to the turret, but that's not really going to matter, as Killy Wolf is trying to hold off the Super Minions here by himself, but I don't know if he can really do that. And the Super Minions are going to prove more than a match for the underfed support Azir. Lee Sin finds Joshua Gress out in the jungle, and his journey home is interrupted. Mirror Step getting another kill in the support pantheon. We're going to be pushing down the bottom lane. Ooh, Q lands on the card that's immediately followed up. And the ultimate is entirely interrupted by his death. Or semi-death, it is Karthus, but it does interrupt that ulti if you bring him into his death passive. And now Aurelia going in, lands the stun onto Azir and makes short work of the bird along with Mirror Step. An inhibitor falling in the middle lane as well as one nearly fallen already in the bottom. And I don't see any way blue team can manage to come back from this. The Q lands... Treason follows it up, and Misfortune is so very dead at this point. Surrender comes out. Blue team gives up the ghost. Purple team takes home the victory. Thank you guys for watching. See you all tomorrow. Hey there, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever it is you feel like doing. Um, many thanks to Treason for the use of his replay. And, um, see you guys tomorrow.